Hello, welcome to my kitchen. Hello. Hello, Matty. Did you say hello to people? Yes. Okay. What are we having today? I have no idea. So should I start by showing the ingredients or should I start by telling what we are going to make? How that one goes straight to the point. We are making falafel. Who doesn't like falafel? Falafel and hummus. I think it's the most democratic vegan food in the world. Don't you think so? It is. It is, right? Make hummus, not war. Exactly, everyone loves it. But today we are making like, it's kind of a falafel, but it's not really a falafel. Yes, it's Marinola way of doing things. Uh, and we are using something that we normally waste in the kitchen. So we, we will work against food waste here. And we'll have something delicious. It's a little bit like a falafel, but it's also a little bit like a burger. So you can have it in either way and it will be amazing. Of course, just a disclaimer, we are not going to fry this, so we are going to pan uh, to grill it. So let's start with our ingredients. Here I have some black eyed peas. And Marina, but normally it's made with chickpeas, right? Yes, right. But in Brazil we have something similar to a falafel that is called acarajé and it's made out of black eyed peas and it's really similar. So, since I had only black eyed peas at home, I decided to go for it, but feel free to use chickpeas if you have it at home. I didn't have it, so I chose a black eyed peas, but whatever. The method is, the only thing you need to do is not cooking the chickpeas, so canned will not do the same. You need to soak them, the same way that I pre-soaked my black eyed peas here. Typically, you have to take out the skin out of the bean, so you have to take it out and then you have the bean and the skin and when you sprout then you always have this little um, I don't know what is this <laughs> this little thing there so this is a sign that the bean was started to be sprout and here I have the little skin then normally they tell you that you should take it out but I would not take it out you know why Matty? because you don't care because I don't care because it's about going to the kitchen and making everything easy and delicious so we don't need to be perfect and that's what I'm going to do. I'm using with the skin. Then if I just have to measure now how much uh, of the beans I have. So I can measure also my how much of my secret ingredient I will use. And that is coming soon. So here, let's see how much I have. I want equal parts of beans and the vegetables. So here I have I have almost 500 grams to be honest so I will use a lot of vegetables and it will be a big batch of uh, falafel but I don't think it's a problem I think it's something that we eat quite fast so I just have to put now on my blender so now my main ingredient is already in the blender and now I start with my secret ingredient I don't even know if Matty can guess he never guessed this kind of stuff. He's not a food waste uh, warrior, uh, but I am. And here it is. I have the leaves of cauliflowers. Yes, a lot of the leaves. And they are whole here, and I will just weigh them to see the quantity that I have. Yes, I have pretty much what I need. That's perfect. And this is a leaf from one whole cauliflower, a big one. But if you don't have enough, it's okay. You can mix with other vegetables and it will be fine in the end. You can also use a little bit less. This recipe, it will always work out. It never goes wrong, I promise you. So now what I have to do, I have just to chop it, not in small pieces, but just enough that the blender can blend everything so if you have a, not a so strong uh, blender, you have to chop it in smaller pieces to make it easier for the machine. But if you have a really powerful blender, don't worry. And you can also use a food processor. I don't have a good one for the moment. So I will use my blender and that is fine. I will just add it here. And now I have to add my seasoning. And I will use two garlic cloves that I will just cut it in the middle again just to make the life of my blender a little bit easier. 
Then I will use one onion and I'm even thinking if I should use one or half. I think I will go for half. I don't like when my little patties, they are too strong in onions. But you know what? You are free to do whatever you want. So if you like a lot of onions, add more and it will be fine. And now I have a really important ingredient that is my herbs because a good falafel has a strong herbal flavor. So I will use here coriander and parsley, the typical combination. And I also like to use lots of herbs because it adds this dark green color to the falafel inside that is just amazing. And as you can see here, my blender is overloaded. But you don't need to worry because as soon as you start to blend everything, the volume will go down and it will make it easier. So now it's time for us to add salt because a good falafel, of course, has to have salt. Like every good food has to have salt, right? So add here my salt. And then it's blender time. So, as you could see, it was a tiny bit overloaded, so at home you probably will make smaller quantities because I will post the smaller recipe, you don't need to be, make all this, but if you make big batches, separate it and blend it in twice, unless you have a really big food processor. So now I see here I didn't blend it, still some pieces, so I will just do it again. But anyway, I need to add uh, now a few extra ingredients. And what is this? Normally, uh, you could add sesame seeds to your falafel or even nuts, you know, with hazelnuts is quite good. Pistachios are amazing. But I want to use a seed and I love pumpkin seeds. So I will use pumpkin seeds. Three good tablespoons here in this case. I could even use more. I could, I will, why not? And then now a tiny bit of olive oil because since we are not frying this dough we want to add a little bit of oil inside because you know what I think about olive oil? It always adds a great taste to food. So now you have here the palazzo batter, batter dough, I always have this difficult question in my head and I will just transfer back to my big bowl here using a spatula and you know sometimes especially if you don't have a really powerful blender you might have small pieces of beans inside and I actually love that if you know you know falafel actually if you do in a food processor you might have more lumps and that is great, you know, it can also be great. I like to do uh, more smooth because sometimes I make like more like a big patty, more like a burger filling. So I like uh, not to have so much pieces. But you know, it depends on your mood, do whatever. And now there is again a secret ingredient that we were going to add to that. And that ingredient is something that adds fluffiness to our falafel. Because normally if you grill them, they might be quite dense. So I like to add a special ingredient that is baking soda and just a tiny bit. You don't want to add taste, you want just to add uh, the fluffiness and then you just mix it in. Everything mixes really well and then you have the option here to add a few drops of lemon juice or if you don't have lemon juice at home, add, uh, well I'm adding limes, lime actually. If you know me, you know how I feel about limes. But you could also add apple cider vinegar or any kind of vinegar that you have. It's again, it's not for the taste. It's just to react a little bit with the baking soda and the acidity will give an extra taste to everything. Acidity always balances everything. So now I have here my batter and it's time to grill them. I have here a tip for you that I will show quickly how to do it. And then you can make your choice at home. So now here I will show you the two options. And basically what it is, we have a big, big batch 
of falafel dough here. But we are only two, and for more than my husband, eats tons of food. Tons. Of tons food. of food. He tons. eats a lot. a lot. The truth is, I will. I know we were not going to go through the whole batch uh, today. So you can also freeze the little uh, patties before uh, grilling them. You can also freeze them after grilling. But this saves a little bit of time and to be honest once they are frozen it's a lot easier to grill them so now um, we just have to mold it in the little cir circles here and if you don't have that at home i will also show you how to do without and i like to use a little ice cream scoop it makes life a lot easier in, in the kitchen so this is a mini version because i'm making a mini one and then i add one scoop a little bit more probably let's see Whoops! And then I just press it down and now I will take it out and you will see I have little cakes here. Good enough for you, Matty? Good enough for you? Could you also use a, like a posh to fill this? You can use a posh, that's true. You can. The piping uh, bag, sorry. That was piping a good bag. idea. Actually, that was a good idea that you gave, Matty. More crust yeah. or my more filling? More crust. More crust? Sure. Always more crust. Crust is king. I, I'm a bit messy sometimes, I have to be But not more than Matthew when he's in the kitchen. But this thing is better when you are in straight lines or not? <laughs> no. No, no, I think it's better. So now people, time to grill our falafels and if you are in a rush, and you don't have the time to freeze, don't forget, it's okay, I will show you how to do. So now, drizzling a little bit of olive oil. Not too much, we don't want too much, we want just a little bit, so I just wait now that it heats up. So now we can start grilling our falafel balls, and how can I know that? I see a tiny bit that fell there and it starts to make little bubbles and the sound also. So time to grill them. I take with a little spatula and carefully I place them on my pan. Can you hear that? It's amazing. I will lower a little bit my heat because now the oil is already warm. I will place a second one. And a third one. Nothing better than the smell of olive oil. Yes. So now I just, while they grill here, they will take a little bit. I just want to show you how to do it if you don't have the little circles at home or anything that you can mold your falafels in. So then you can just take a big scoop and with the clean hands, of course, you make little bowls. And be careful, I have really cold hands and Matthew can attest that. Yes. But if you don't have really uh, cold hands, they might uh, fall apart easy, fast. So you need to work out fast for that. And then you just flatten them and they will look a little bit like this, you know, like patties. But why not? They will also taste delicious and it will work out fine. And then you just place it in your tray or straight to the pan. One question that people always make uh, me and I say it's not a problem, it will not taste the same, but it's okay, is Marina, can I bake them? Of course, you can bake them. They will taste a little bit more dry outside, crispy but dry, because that's what oven does, but they will be also great. So it's an option. If for you it's easier to bake them, bake them. Oh, fry them. Nah, it's marinola, I don't advise you to fry it. So now they are getting ready. I already turned a few because I saw that they were starting to burn, so I needed to, to do them without showing you, sorry. But now we are going to show you, you just need to turn as soon as you know they are golden crispy on one side. And you just turn, don't forget, you use either two forks or a fork and a spatula, it's always the safest. Don't put your hands in the fire.
So now you know what, we just need to wait a little bit until it grills both sides and I will just do it here with you, a quick yogurt dipping sauce that it will go perfect with it. Something quick, something easy because you can transform only this food here into a whole meal if you want. So here I have just some vegan yogurt. Which kind of vegan yogurt? This is uh, what made with soy, it's a soy yogurt, but you can have with cashews, almond, it really doesn't matter. I like a lot this one because it's really thick. So I just added a pinch of salt to my yogurt and yes, don't worry, that is normal. And then I'll add also olive oil. herbs that you want so I will use uh, dill, parsley, a mix of everything and lemon juice again adds a touch extra acidity to our yogurt this one is a bit dry normally half is enough you mix it well and now you can use fresh herbs if you have it at home but if you don't have, dry herbs are also fine and I will use Annette here in this case. I never know the name of this herb because it has so many names in every language, no? It's Dill, Andro, Annette, so many names. And basically it's ready and then of course I have to try it. <laughs> I'm just turning them once more just to check that they are really ready, that they are crispy, golden. And yes, I'm using my hands, but be careful if you use your hands at home, please. I just turn off the heat and I wait them to cool down just two to five minutes, just enough that they firm, because while they are too warm, they are quite fragile. Should I taste it or should I give it to taste? You taste it first. I taste, I the, taste the first one. I want to choose a really golden, crispy brown because I know that's the one you like it. So I would want to steal it from you. Mm. 